In this class, we are going to learn how to create a Linux virtual machine in the Azure with the help of Azure portal. In our previous class, we had seen how to create a Linux virtual machine in the Azure with the help of Azure portal, wherein we had selected the authentication method as username and password. In this class, we are going to go through the same use case that is creating the virtual machine with the help of Ubuntu Linux distro, but this time authentication method will be SSH keys. Now, without wasting much time, let's begin with our hands-on. First thing is we have to go to this virtual machine section in your portal that is portal.azure.com. One of the method is you can search for the virtual machines over here in the search box and you can click on this. It will take you to this page or else you can just click on this create resource and select the virtual machine. As I am already in this virtual machines creation page, let me just click on this create button and select the Azure virtual machine. So once the page to create the virtual machine opens up, you have to select the subscription under which subscription you are going to create this virtual machine for suppose you might have n number of subscriptions under the management group you have to select the appropriate subscription and the resource group to which you are attaching this resource so that you can efficiently manage the virtual machine but is by managing the resource group itself resources as part of the resource group will inherit the policies and the governance whatever you provide for the group coming to the virtual machine name i will provide the name over here my testing 105 vm so you can provide some unique name you have to select the region cost of vm will vary as per the region some of the regions will have a less cost some regions will have more cost you have to select as per the project as well as the country where the customer is residing coming to the availability you can go for the virtual machine scale set and the availability set in order to have your vm with the high availability and reliability so i'm not going for this option in this class coming to the image we have to select the image i'm selecting ubuntu server 20.04 lts which is the latest at the time of recording this class Apart from Ubuntu Linux distro, you are having other distros as well like the Red Hat, Oracle, Debian as well as the SUAC. Coming to the architecture, I am going for the 64, I am not going for the ARM. Coming to the size, you can select the size, what you want. I am going for one CPU and it costs me $51 per month. Coming to the authentication type, we have to go for the SSH key and provide the username. Coming to the SSH key source, suppose if you are not supplying your own SSH key, then you have to leave it this default because Microsoft will generate the SSH key which you can download at the end, that is while creating the VM. Suppose you already have a SSH key, then you can select this like use existing public key or use existing key stored in Azure, this option you can use. So I am not having any keys present in Azure, so I want Microsoft to generate the SSH key for me. So I am leaving this generate new key pair. Coming to the inbound ports, we have to select the SSH over here. Suppose if you are deploying the web services, then you have to open the HTTP as well as the HTTPS as well as per the use cases. So I just want to demonstrate the SSH in this class. Click on disk. Suppose if you want to change the disk, that is premium SSD to standard HDD. Because standard hard disk drives are cost effective, premium SSDs are little bit costly. So if you want to add any other disk apart from the default disk where your OS will be installed that you can add over here. Coming to the networking, if you already have a virtual network created in the Azure, you can make use of that because redundant virtual networks will be very difficult to maintain sometimes. Coming to the subnet and all, it will create a new one for me. Same with the IP address. Coming to the management, if you want to shut down your VM after some time, like if your office closes at 5 p.m. in the evening, then you can provide the time over here so that you can save some cost. In Azure, you are being charged only until you have used any resources. Coming to the monitoring, you can enable the diagnostic you can also have the alert like suppose if the CPU percentage increases by certain percentage or some value then you can get the notified. So this comes with some price 70 cents per month. I don't want to have any alerts. I'm unchecking that. Coming to the advanced, there are few advanced kind of things over here like the custom data you can provide the init command. So at the time of launching this OS, it will run the commands for you. Coming to the tag, you can add the tag like who created and for what purpose this was created. I will select this was created for the SCM project. Click on the review and create and see all the details you have filled while creating this virtual machine. So as you can see, Microsoft has calculated the charges based on the storage as well as the compute which I have selected. Basically, these are the two criteria based on which the charging will happen in Azure. Rest all the things like virtual networks, IP address creation, all those things are free. So Microsoft is charging me 70 cents per hour. So you can reduce this further by selecting the appropriate region wherever the VMs are charged less. Once you are happy with all the details, click on this create. Now you should get a dialog wherein Microsoft will tell download the private key. So you have to download the private key because this key you have to safely store somewhere in Git repository or somewhere because this won't be available later point of time to download once you have forgot to download this private key at this stage. Now let me just click on the return key. 
so once deployment is in progress we will get the message on the right top corner something like this let's wait for a couple of seconds until vm is completely deployed once your vm is completely deployed you will get a message something like deployment completed now if you want to see the details you can click on the operation details so it will tell in what seconds it has created the vm it is created in 58 seconds because our compute power is little less that is one cpu and 3 gb of ram maybe so once done you can just scroll down and go to the resource or else you can search in the search box over here the virtual machines so you will get the list of all the vms which you have created so this is the vm which we have created in this class that is with the authentication type as ssh key suppose if you want to reset the password you can click on this reset password under the help you can re-upload the ssh keys over here so we are not going to do that coming to the overview back so we will get the public ip address over here so we can make use of the same in order to connect to the or ssh into the vm now in order to ssh we have to click on this connect button over here you will get the details like how to ssh now first thing is we have to upload the pm file in the appropriate folder in which we are trying to ssh now how to do that i will show you just launch this powershell over here let me just clear this window let me just exit from my last session that is from the previous vm let me just clear again now let me see in which directory i am in we have to first of all upload the pm file in order to connect then only we will be able to ssh because while providing the username and the public ib address we have to provide the pm file now click on this upload button over here click on this upload we have to select the file that is the pm file which we had downloaded in the previous step that is while creating the vm click on this open so it has uploaded the file let me just check under what folder directory it has uploaded so it is saying upload destination is home slash maps. so i am in the map itself and this is the ssh file that is the private file let me just minimize this next is we have to provide this read only permission on the file let me just copy or i will copy up to ch mode 400 open back this cli let me paste it again next is we have to provide the file name over here click on enter yeah permission has been added next we'll go back to this the command is ssh minus i then we have to provide the key name that is my test and then comes this part that is username and the public ip address let me just paste it over here and click on enter as i am logging into this virtual machine first time with the cli it is asking permission to continue i am clicking on s now this time it is not asking us to enter the password so it will log in with the help of this username and the ssh key so like this we can bypass the password or else we can make the authentication secure by making use of ssh keys over here suppose if you want to change the disk data whatever you are storing in the vm exceeds the predefined value like what you have configured over here you can increase this size like swapping the os disk you can go for and you can select the disk which you are want to use let me just go back so if you want to add or attach the new disk then you can add the disk over here in which you can store the data suppose if you want to change the compute power like if you want to increase the cpu or increase the ram then you can come over here and select and resize this vm Similarly, if you want to add any extensions like the apps, if you want to add, you can just click on this add and you can install the extensions in your computer like the SSH login AD, like if you want to add any other apps like the agent so and so forth things, you can have a look at these extensions and you can add the extensions required for your OS. So in our case, this VM is open, the port 22 for the SSH login every time. Suppose if you want to safeguard this VM from the attackers who are constantly searching for the available or the open ports in the public cloud so that they can get into the resource and they can access the storage and get away with your data so in that case you can go for the just in time vm so that you can open the windows during that period you can ssh this you will see in some classes going ahead also you can log the resource as well and other operations are available coming to monitoring as well as respect to operations also if you want to get into this vm we can go for the serial console it will open the console something like this here also you can get into this vm and manage the files suppose if you want to redeploy or reapply some changes after configuration or you can just come over here and you can redeploy the or restart the virtual machine other option is you can go to this overview over here and you can just click on this restart if you want to stop the vm suppose if you are done with your work in this vm for example if you are creating a vm for a development purpose then you can stop this vm when you are not using this so that you can save some money
So this was the short overview on creating virtual machines that is based on the Ubuntu Linux distro with the help of SSH keys.